Our next guest in our studio is Dr. Uli Grunder, who's a master clinician from Switzerland. Welcome, thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Thank you for inviting me. And I have a very important question. Today, it's extremely rare to have somebody who's a master surgeon and a master prosthodontist. If I'm a young uh, doctor, how would I do that today? How, what would you recommend me to do? Well, the best is if you have a postgraduate education chance to learn both. But I, I think, especially in implant dentistry, uh, the prosthetic part is so important, you know? Exactly. Because at the very end, what we sell are the crowns. Everything you do as a surgeon, the patient has pain, but he doesn't see anything. Well, it's his beautiful, beautiful tissue, of course, if you finish your case, but, uh, and as a prosthodontics, you have the full understanding where you place the implant, where you need the tissue and everything. So this is, I think, a very good uh, education to do implant dentistry. And then, additionally, you should have not oral surgeon. I think it's more perio today, more perio. you know, if you do, I, I do not the big cases as you do with more. I do more the, the smaller cases, and then perio surgery is very important. So yeah, train both, and then you can have big fun because I think you have the same if you have a referral dentist, and then they make lousy crowns on your beautiful work. Yeah, it's a nightmare. Exactly. Okay, so <laughs> I can control everything, and I love to do it. And how was your? How did you do your education? Where did you do your education, and how? What was the? Uh, the, uh, you were continuously educating yourself in both, or how was the program well, that you did? I, I was lucky. I was at Peter Scherer's department in Zurich. He was actually famous worldwide at his time for yes. prosthodontics, of course. But he also he was also a specialist in perio, and we always had these perio surgical procedures. And then when I went to private office as a prosthodontics, also knowing perio, I had a partner in my office. Dr. Gobertiel, who was a pure periodontist. So I learned also a lot from him. And we, we, we also published on a, on a uh, protocol how to do the perioprosthetic treatment. So we did a lot of cases together and I learned like this. And I have to say at the time when I was young, some years ago, it was easy to make mistakes. So I learned by my own mistakes. And young people, they don't have the chance to make all the mistakes with it because they can learn from you, maybe a little bit from me. So, and so we know better than we knew at the time. So but it's easier to learn today, no? Than, than no, it was easier then. Easier because then. Because nobody could... Not, not was talk so complicated, about, right? Yeah. Talk about aesthetics with implants. Nobody knew. We, we started in 87. Hey, we were happy that, that these crews were stable and then that was it. And we started to, to try to make them look good. Nobody knew anything about aesthetics on implants. So whatever we tried, if we failed, it still looked horrible, but that was how it looks normally. So we had the chance to improve it, and that was easier than today. And when do you think you started to really achieve to a, a high standard aesthetic level in the anterior maxilla with implants? Early 90s. 91, 93, we started the concept we do today, the same. Placing implants together with bone augmentation with the non resolvable membrane. We started in 91. We have the first cases where we also added always the soft tissue since then. So it's very early. Yeah, very early. So and do you think there was a lot of uh, clinicians in the early 90s who were doing bone grafts, implants, and soft tissue grafts? No. Not many. No. Right? But, but so you, you realize if you want to have a nice result, you realize very quickly that soft tissue is very important. So in your presentation, you're going to focus on how you place the implants in the, uh, how you design and place the implants in the aesthetic zone, bone regeneration around them, but also soft tissue reconstructions. I will show both, and I, I will show, you know, I have a concept, as you have a concept, and maybe the concept can be changed and it works as well. I, I show, go rather quickly through the concept we do, and it's quite standardized, always what we do. It depends on the case, of course. Okay, this is what I want to show, and I want to show, I will start at the beginning, to tell what we have to do from a prosthetic point of view, to understand what is needed in the surgical procedure to gain all the tissue. And then I will show you how to gain bone, of course, but bone is not enough. As we all know today, it's very clear. And then we need the soft tissue as well, but we have to handle it in a correct way. As I said, at the very end, we have a chance to make the nice superstructure. Uh, I never told you that, but the first time I've seen you lecturing was 2003 in Vienna at the EAO. Okay. And, um, you know, I was, I was in between, I think, two rooms, and I was just like, I heard about you, but I've never, never, never seen you. And I go in, and it was two central incisors with a papilla in between them and an implant. And I was like, okay, wow. 
because we all talked about that how we can make a papilla between two implants, but I've never seen one case as beautiful as that, and I was just like so blown away. Thank already. you. So thank you very much for still, that, because he's then, we, you know, I'm more We still know it's hard work, but we <laughs> can do it. <laughs> okay, so um, um, I wish you good luck for your presentation, and thank, thank you. you so much for accepting thank you our for hosting invitation. Me. It's a pleasure. And after this, the next uh, guest is going to talk about bone regeneration, but that's going to be tomorrow.